I guess another thing I want to ask is, um, so this this is all you just running off your gut because this looks an awful lot like a the, a Polish painter called I can't pronounce oh, yeah. it Zizla or something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sure, this, he was definitely a huge inspiration for me. I've looked into him before. Um, yeah, it's it's as like this is as beautiful as that. Like it's it's brilliant. I I really really like it, and it's a brilliant style. And I guess um that that's what I'm I'm asking is uh so so and then never mind about that. But we're really really interested about the chaos thing and moving into this becoming more ordered. And and he the reason why I brought him up is because he reminded me of someone who he, when you look at his stuff you can tell that it's really like him digging into something incredibly profound and deep and scary. And uh, this has this same thing. It has this authentic feeling that you're digging into something. So I guess this is the question about the loneliness thing. Like, what, what do you mean by that? Like, what was going on there? Um, I've always felt pretty, dis- pretty disconnected from other people, which was before the trip and after the trip. It's continued for a long time. Um, and I've had this feeling of, or this idea of me being kind of an invisible man. So other, other people could influence me. Um, but I couldn't actually have an influence on other people. Um, and I never felt, I, f- I believe it was because I uh, focused on the differences between me and other people and not on the similarities. So I've always uh, saw myself as very different from other um, people, which I guess uh, is the cause for this solitude that you mm. see here. And what do you mean you can't influence other people as in like when you speak to them, you can't seem to move them or what? Yeah, well, so I, I've always been a very, um, very introverted person. Um, so this was, I've actually never really talked much mm. till I, till like 20, 22, something like this. Um, and I've always waited for other people to engage me. I never, I never actively went into the world. I've just uh, saw what happened to me, and this was kind of the the feeling that I got for and at the time that I was like this, basically invisible person. I could, mm. or you, you could maybe see it like a character in a video game that can do things in the game, but not actually influence the other characters. Mm. Wow, so that's really, can, yeah, that's that's really interesting, man. That's really interesting. Um, okay, cool. Keep going there. Keep going. Yes. Um, and then at some point, the gazing started, um, which is the, the people or the, the characters in the paintings actually intensely stare at something. Before it was like they were kind of lost in the place. Uh, and now they find something which they can concentrate on and focus mm-hmm. on. Um, also, you notice the colors get a little bit brighter or not as, uh, as dark as before. Mm-hmm. not as gritty looking um and so this theme of actually looking at uh at an object that has a kind of transcendent uh yeah it, it transcendence to it um is something that started at some point and continued or does still continue um and this one is a painting so the the colors were always a huge deal for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've painted when I started painting. It was the reds and blacks. Uh, then blues entered the scene. At some points, yellow came in, uh, and this one was the first one where I actually painted with purple. Uh, it was also the first big painting I did. The other ones before were always small, mm-hmm. um, and this was larger. And it actually coincided with me uh, having my first contact with the feminine. So <laughs> I had my first kiss at the, at the time. Um, and I guess this kind of triggered this, this side of, of my emotion. So some parts that were locked before, um, yeah. the colors I didn't use uh, became, became used. And this was the purple. That's amazing. That's just so interesting. And the thing I love about this is that you, when you were describing this to me first, like you're sort of psychoanalyzing these now, if you will. You're looking back through them now and being like, all right, that's, there's the art pieces that have been happening. Oh, that's what was going on here. But at the time, there was none of, you weren't like saying, all right, I've had my first kiss. I'll use some purple. Like it wasn't <laughs> like that at all. You were saying that a lot of this was very, very much you just going with the flow and letting, almost allowing yourself to be led and it's only now that you're looking back and seeing these things. Am I correct in, in that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So actually, I only started to look back on the paintings um, as more than just uh, things that uh, before I thought they didn't have any meaning to them. Mm. It was just like, yeah, me getting some kind of vibe that I was uh, that I was bringing into the world, but nothing that was connected to me. It was kind of apart from me. Mm -hmm. um, and when I first got, got into Jung, which is, I, I've got a painting somewhere later in the slide, slideshow. Um, and that was the point when I actually looked back uh, at the old paintings and uh, tried to find patterns um, that kind of correlated with the changes I went through at the time. And so this is a really, really interesting thing because there's this sort of interaction between and the art in the world and then when you do things in the world like in the video game if you will when you do various things it 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 influences the art in some sense and did you ever find an inverse thing like was there was is there a sort of communication going on or is it one way like when you, you have the first kiss does then the art change or was it ever something where you felt that that the art was suggesting you to you to do something or maybe maybe that's not the right way to say it. was there ever a mood that ended up in a painting that actually and t turned out to be extremely useful in your life as well. Um, I believe it goes both ways, actually. So it can be that that. So I think it's uh, it's like um, working with the theme. So um, mm. first, the first time me finding some kind of this uh, romantic feelings or or desires, stuff like this. Um, and those had to be worked through. I couldn't just like take them in just like this. Um, and so the painting had to be created to, um, yeah, to, to get through this. But the other way around also works. If I, if I have some theme that is hidden inside of me um, and the art breaks it free or uh, creates some place for it, then I can later act it out in the world. Mm, interesting. Really interesting. Really interesting. <clears throat> okay, cool, sir. Keep going, man. Yes. So this one was uh, also one of these, this, the staring at, an, at another object. So here we have a character, um, and this is supposed to be kind of a mirror, but into another world. So another uh, version of this, this uh, character here. Um, and what I've always found fascinating was the wall, which he's standing before. I'm not quite sure what it means, but I, probably it's something like um, the transformation that could take place, but there's something um, something that's preventing it from happening right now. And do you remember anything from your life at that time that, was, that would be representative? Or what, like, what blocks do you remember in these type of things? Um, this was me trying to... Yeah, pretty much this, this was the heavy transformation phase where I started to read books, self-help things, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, I started to train heavily, um, get into shape. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically that, that time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this was something as I uh, titled the, the slideshow, Navigating Through Life Via Art. Um, this is something that also... Uh, happened or something that I started to do was doing little birthday presents or drawings for friends, mm -hmm. um, trying to kind of catch their character and put it into a painting or drawing. Mm 